Hey everyone, today we're going to make a data store for our game so that our markers can actually save. Now before we start, you should probably know that data stores are quite problematic and they work for some people and don't for others. So make sure if you get any problems with your data store, make sure the script matches exactly and make sure that you have no errors in your output. And if you still can't get it to work, then just leave a comment and we'll see what we can do. Okay, so let's make this data store. Now what we want to do is under server script service, we need to add in a new script and I'm going to rename it to data store and we need to create a local data store variable. In this variable, we are going to get the service for our data store and we're actually going to make a data store. So local DS, which can be short for data store, is going to be equal to game colon get service data store service as that's where we can actually get our data store by doing colon get data store and in here you just want the name of your data store I'm gonna put tutorial now if you rename this in the future so all your data will be saved to the tutorial data store if you decide to wipe the data in the future you can just make a tutorial to just change this and all the data will be reset and if you want to go back to the old data, just change it back to what it was, like so. Anyway, I'm going to call this tutorial one, and let's drop down. Now we need to create a function which will be called when a player joins the game. And now, by now, that's quite a common function. We should know how to do that. Game dot players dot player added colon connect function and then player. Now, just in case you are unfamiliar, the player is the player that's just joined the game. That's who's being passed into here. Now, what we're going to do is just add weight like that. And this will wait, I believe it's 0 0.03 seconds. And it just creates a small amount of time before our script actually runs. So it doesn't run as so the second the instance the player joins the game. It waits like a tiny bit of time. Now we need to create a player key. So to do that, local player key. And we're going to set it equal to id underscore dot dot player dot user id. Now this will give each player their own player key when they join the game. And that's what we're going to use to save the data. Now we need to create our save values. These are the things we're going to save. So if we open up our leader stats, you'll see we've got these four loops here which create our markers. So let's go into our markers and you'll see we've got markers here. So what we want to do is create a save value for each of these. Now we could use a for loop. However, it won't always give you the same order. I mean, it most likely will, but sometimes it might go a bit wrong and not give you the same order. So that kind of messes up the save data. So what we're going to do instead is create an individual ver variable for each marker. So local save value equals player dot markers dot bouncy marker. In fact, actually, bouncy markers got a space, so we have to use these square brackets like so. Okay, that's the first one. Now I'm going to copy that line because there's no point in retyping it out and just paste it for the number of markers you got. You want to paste those save values plus one, and we'll go over that in a minute. So this is save value one. That'll be save value two, three, four, and five. Now two is going to be cave marker for me. Three will be podium marker, and four will be sliding marker. Now, if we go back over to our leader stats, you'll see we actually have a markers found. We want to save that as well. Now, this will actually be in the leader stats. So, player.leaderstats. Oh, it's got space, so it'll be markers found, like so. These are our five save values. If you've got more markers, you're going to have a lot more save values. Now, I'm sorry if this kind of gets clustered. It's just the safest way of doing it. I didn't want to risk anything unsafe because people will then get a lot of problems and it will create a load of errors. So what we want to do now is create a get saved value by doing local get saved and this is where we're going to get our saved data. To do that equals ds, remember our data store variable we made up here, colon get async and now, now we've got to put the player key. This will retrieve the player's data. Now if there is data, so if get saved then if there is data we want to say save value one dot value equals get saved one now this will set the data of save value one the value of it to our data in the get saved now we want to copy that and do it for the number of save values we have in our case five so two three four 
five, get saved, two, three, four, five, like so. Now we're gonna have to add in an else just under here. And now we've got to actually save the numbers. If there is no numbers saved, we have to save them. So to do that, local numbers for saving. So we're going to make a table to save the numbers. Equals save value one dot value comma save value two dot value. And we just got to keep doing that. So what I'm going to do is copy that like so. And then we can just keep pasting it in. 3, 4, and 5. So save value 5, save value 4, save value 3, 2, 1. Like so. Perfect. Okay, now you want to type ds colon get a sync. Player key and numbers for saving. So what this will do is if we don't have any saved data on the player key, we're going to retrieve it manually, basically. That's kind of the best way of describing this. Now we're done with our player added, we just need a player removing. So game.players.player removing colon connect function player. So exact same as player added, it's just player removing. And now we need to say ds colon set async. This is where we're going to save the data. ID underscore. Now make sure this here is the exact same as this up here. If it's not, it will not work. And then dot dot player dot user ID. And now we have to create a table for our save values. So I'm going to say local save values equals table. And it's going to be each item here. So I'm actually going to copy these save values, paste them down here. Just so we've got access to them down here as well. And then what we need to do is save them. So it would be save value one dot value save value two dot value etc for all of them three four and five and then well after this comma we literally just put in our save values and just like that it should now work now before you can test this hit game settings go to security and enable studio access to api service and save that has to be on or this will not work if we now hit play you'll see we can walk around Let's go collect our marker. I still need to anchor this here. So let's collect this marker here. If we now go under our player markers and our podium marker, it's ticked. Let's get one more marker just to make sure. Let's get the cave marker. We've got two markers collected and the cave markers ticked. If we now stop the game, you'll say it, take, it takes a little while to stop. That's a good sign. It's doing something. If we now press play again, you'll see we have two markers collected, so that's saved. And you will see if we go in our markers, cave markers ticked and podium markers still ticked. However, our markers are still here. There is one more thing we need to do. So what we've got to do is add in a local script, but we can't just add it to a part. We have to add it under our starter player. But you'll notice we already had one from here on this on client event. So what we want to do is remove this while wait here and we're going to go into our local script and what we're going to do is we've got our part and that's fine however we want to get we want to update it every single frame so we can add a while wait do once again while wait 0.5 do and we're going to need if player dot markers dot and then let's, let's do bouncy marker bouncy marker no we'd actually have a uh, we'll do game dot players dot player uh, dot local player that, that's it there we go bouncy marker dot value equals true then what we're gonna do is we will have to call a server event to then call this client event up here now that sounds annoying and it is we can just call bouncy marker so Game dot replicate storage dot marker events bouncy marker colon fire server and we don't need to pass anything in here. Now under our bouncy marker script, we need to say game dot replicate storage dot marker events bouncy marker dot on server event colon connect function. And now in here we have to pass the player, and then we want to fire the event again. <laughs> game dot replicate storage dot marker events bouncy marker colon fire client 
and we want to add in here when we fire the client you'll see up here when when we do it we've got player and script.parent let's pass those in and now if we go over to our local script we then have this up here which we'll call so if that makes sense now let me explain that simply every every half a second we're going to check if the player has the bouncy marker and if they do we're gonna call this function or not function so we're gonna call this event when that event is called inside of our bouncy marker script we're going to refire that event but for the client and then the client will make it invisible up here if that makes sense now what we need to do is copy that if statement for every single marker we have it's a cave marker uh, podium marker and sliding marker like so and once again we need to copy this script in fact we can just copy that there and then go into each script so cave marker and add it like so and then change that to cave and that to cave and you get the gist do that for each script now this isn't the most optimized it can be however what we're making here would only be classed as a small game it wouldn't be classed as a large game so there is no need to really worry about this handling it will handle yeah there's no reason to actually worry about the handling of this game it will handle because it's only a small game there's there's not going to be much um going on at once it's kind of collecting markers every now and then so there's not a lot going on at once so unless of course you add a lot but look, as you can see the markers are now invisible the ones that we've already collected so of course if you don't want the markers to go invisible when you collect them you just want to turn can collide off you can uh, and then that will save you all that script but there we go it saves so that's what I wanted to show you now if we hit play again four markers and they're all invisible so I hope you enjoyed this video everyone Thank you so much all for watching. Uh, in the next episode, what we are going to do is probably start making the inventory for these. Where we'll be able to see what markers we've already collected and what ones we haven't. So I will see you then. And goodbye everyone.